Yes, we are live now. Hi, everyone. We are happy to be back live on our social media channels with uh, our dear UD family. This uh, is one of our UD interview series where we talk to Uzbek professionals working abroad about their career journeys and life experiences. And this time we have a very special guest, Mushtari, who is currently living in Berlin, Germany. Mushtari has been accumulating work experience in top uh, companies like uh, Adidas, uh, SAP, and since recently in Tesla, and now ready uh, to, share, to share her story with the uh, rest of the Uzbek diaspora community. And welcome to today's episode, Mushtari. How are you? Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. I'm doing great. And how are you, Big Zod? And first of all, I would like really thank you guys for inviting me, for having me. It's really a, it's really a great opportunity for me to share my ideas and thoughts with you guys. And maybe I really hope that I will be very helpful today. Yeah, I'm very convinced too that you would be very helpful to our audience. Can you please briefly introduce yourself to, to our uh, Uzbek diaspora community about your background, uh, where you come from? So uh, I come from Uzbekistan, uh, from Navoi region. And like in uh, 2015, I moved to Germany, like as all students. I uh, would like to start my bachelor's degree. So, and in Berlin, I studied my bachelor's degree in business and management, but mostly focusing on finance, so all uh, finance related topics. And like in 2019, I graduated from the university with the business and science degree. And yeah, and uh, right now working for Tesla as an IT planning analyst. Very good. So like, uh, why, I mean, why did you choose to come to Germany to pursue your higher education? Because uh, you speak English very well and many people in Uzbekistan who speak English, they usually uh, try to go to United States or uh, Great Britain or any other English speaking countries. Why Germany in your case? Um, I mean, uh, like, Everybody has their dream to study abroad, but for me, the Germany was not my dream, like if to say honestly. So when I was studying at uh, the Singapore University in Tashkent, like a couple of my friends, they were accepted to German universities. And one day when we had a talk with them, they thought, okay, let's give a try, Mushtari, you too, like, and we will see what's gonna happen. I mean, you won't lose anything anyway. So just give a try and apply to a couple of universities and we will see what's gonna happen. And so I did. I mean, it was just for luck. I mean, uh, so I did. And then after a couple of weeks, I received this congratulation letter, admission letter from the University uh, of Applied Sciences in Berlin, saying that I was uh, I got accepted to the university. And after that, like in a couple of months, I mean, like three or four months, like I had to uh, prepare my visa application, the university, and then and now all this documentation like takes some time, as you know. And after that, in 2015, I came to Germany. And since then, up to 2019, uh, I studied my bachelor's degree. Yeah. So like, um, I mean, uh... In that case, like, how, how was your first first days in Germany? I mean, how did you feel? Oh, <laughs> I had really long cultural shock. <laughs> For me, it was like, um, I mean, you know, like when you are grown up in Uzbekistan and when you even travel to other countries or you know, abroad, you experience this cultural shock for a while. So I had that as well, I mean, in the beginning, and I was, young at that age and uh, when you come to a country where you don't know anybody and you don't know the language you don't know the people and nothing of course you will have this fear and then you will have this cultural shock and also the most important thing is that the university like if you know the study program comparing to uzbekistan like it's 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 like it's really different in germany it's it's much more harder i mean it's easier to get accepted to the universities of germany but, and then it's really difficult to graduate it. So for me, like it took almost a year to get used to this environment, to get used to my university, my lectures. Yeah, so, I mean, I would say the first year, I mean, it was kind of um, difficult for me, but after that, I mean, I just got used to that. 
and now living literally in here. <laughs> yeah, like you know, uh, many people. I mean, many people who um, work and study or have studied abroad say like it's very different studying in a particular country uh, compared compared to Uzbekistan because uh, because of several reasons and. In, in, in Germany's case, uh, what is different in German universities than Uzbekistan universities, you know? Why it's different and why it's difficult to study in Germany? I mean, the really, like, uh, the difficulty is, like, you face the difficulty not during the lectures, I mean, language barrier could be, but not especially during your lectures. You will face these difficulties when you are, like, uh, when you are, like, uh, having your final exams. In there, you will have these difficulties because for me, because uh, in German universities, like uh, not all of the professors would like, would say, okay, that you have to come or would that you have to attend all of the lectures. I mean, it's up to you. If, if you would like, you can come or you can attend the university lectures. But if you don't want, you don't have to. But in the end, when it comes to the final exams, you have to pass it everything. And also, another thing is like, you have this uh, fear also, I mean, I think you're also familiar familiar about this, that you can fail only three times. I mean, it's in prob uh, private universities, you, you are given uh, three chances to fail the exam. I mean, entire your uh, study course, I mean, during your six semesters. And in public universities, it's only two chances. And if you fail this, I mean, if you fail any exam three times, and then, I mean, you cannot like graduate from German, from German universities at all. I mean, it's, it's really difficult. So in this case, when you know, and you have this fear and you, you, you kind of push yourself to do your best to like pass you all of the exams. So for me, the really difficulty was like, um, I mean, during the examination period, I would say, yeah, not during the lectures, because during the lectures, everything is easier compared especially during your final exams it's it's difficult and also what was difficult for me is when i started like doing my bachelor thesis so this period like was also difficult for me because um, the first three to four semesters i spent only to do research i mean to get the information what i would like to write about you know that you have to write everything on your own and then in the end when you submit your thesis they will check it and yeah, I mean, for me, it was difficult yeah, during the examination period and also the final thesis, the bachelor thesis. But that's why I'm still thinking about uh, having, like doing my master's degree only because of this final thesis. Otherwise, I would study my master's as well, even now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very interesting story. Uh, if I may summarize, like uh, there are several barriers, like language barriers, first of all, and final exams which are quite uh, exhausting, which are quite challenging in Germany. And of, of course, the number of fails that you uh, you shouldn't be exceeding in order to be able to uh, graduate uh, successfully. Okay, so uh, recently there has been a huge change in your professional career, which is you have started your job at Tesla. Uh, I think in that category, you are one of the few Uzbek people uh, be, being able to do that and congratulations on that. But before getting into details about how you accomplished it, uh, let's talk about your initial work experience uh, in Adidas, in SAP, which I think uh, served as a stepping stones uh, to this greater achievement. Can you start with your, uh, your life at Adidas? Uh, what were you responsible for? Okay. That? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. I mean, when I came to Germany, for me, the important thing was not only to graduate from the university, but I also like I had this um, like goal in my mind. OK, what kind of mushtari I would like to see in five years? So this was kind of my goal. And I like somehow I knew what I want to have and a way and where I want to be. And that's why I always try to get some practical experience during my studies, because I knew from my uh, manager at Adidas, like she gave me really, really nice like advice. She told me, if you would like to work in the top companies in the future, you have to start from now. Don't wait like 
until you graduate from the university. Don't wait. Start from now and do your best. I mean, if it's okay for you, I mean, during your studies, like take it 50 to 50. Not, uh, don't focus only on your studies to get like A marks only, but also focus on your practical experience. Because if you would like to go to the top companies, then they would they would really pay attention like what how much practical experience you had and at which companies you worked. For example, let's say if there would be two candidates, for example, you have your like A grades only with no experience and other candidate is like with, let's say, uh, B and C, B like grades, but with huge experience, with really nice experience in the past during his or her university years, they would definitely uh, hire, uh, hire them, uh, this guy or this girl. So for me, uh, this advice like really helped a lot. That's why I always strived to get more experience during my studies. And because as I, as I told you, I knew where I want to be in the future. That's why I tried like doing my very best from the first day when I came to Germany. And this is also my advice to also young generation or for those students who are really currently studying or almost finishing their studies. Okay, thank you. These uh, are very useful indeed. To to what extent, like to uh, to what extent? Uh, I think you have uh, partially uh, answered this question, which I'm going to give you. But anyway, I, I lost. Like, to what extent is collecting work experience during uh, university years and after university years important? Um, it's really important if you gain more practical experience during your studies, not after your studies. Because let's look, when you finish your studies, you are ready to work for some companies. But if you don't have any experience, I don't think that any of the companies would hire you, would give you a chance. Because first of all, you don't know how, how like you don't know and you, you have no idea how this business world look like. But you don't know, like, for example, let's take another example, for example, when you were during the interview, all of the interviewers would ask you, okay, have you ever faced with this um, difficult situation during your experience? Because they want to see you, how would you, uh, I mean, um, how would you handle this diff difficult situations during your work? They would like to see this. And if you don't have any practical experience, this is, I mean, um, I mean, this is not an advantage for you. That's why I really, really and highly recommend for all of the students to get their practice during their studies, not after, but before their studies, because especially this, like steps, this minor steps would really help them in the future to get like full-time job with unlimited contract and maybe also at, at top companies. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, many people are watching online right now and they are all already asking some questions. Uh, let me put one of them. Uh, Dora Karimova, she, she's asking, can you please tell what was your motivation to study business? Um, I mean, so when I started, I mean, first of all, let's start like, I hated maths when I was at school. I really hated maths, maths. But now, if I look, if I look to my work, it's 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 hundred percent maths. Like what whatever I do, it's everything is related to finance. So when I start started my studies, it was business and management, and uh, I mean, I mean, I, um, I mean, I haven't had an idea that I would study finance. Um, when I had my uh, internship with Adidas. And during my like last couple of months, um, I had a talk with my manager and then uh, like she advised me, okay, what you would like to study? Because if you know in Germany, your last couple of semesters would be your focused semester where you will be focused on like certain area. And then you have to decide, okay, like which, um, like which kind of courses you would like to take depending on your interest. So, and then what I asked my manager, what she told me is, okay, don't pay attention, like, what everybody is studying now. Like, really pay attention to what will be really in trend in a couple of years. I mean, you don't have to study marketing. You don't have to study e-commerce because everybody is studying that. Study something else. Study something different that would be really beneficial for you in the future and that would any company would hire you with that experience that you had. So that's why, I mean, 
And after this conversation, I knew that the finance would be really difficult. And it was, it was really difficult for me. And after that, as I told you, I knew what I want to see myself in the future. That's why I told to myself, okay, it can be, I mean, it might be difficult now. I mean, I might will have like sleepless nights now, but in the future, after when I will graduate my university and will have my bachelor's degree, I mean, everything will be easy for me. So you have to, sometimes you have to sacrifice something now so that you can have something in the future. I mean, and that's why I guess all of the students and especially Dora should find their motivation in themselves. For example, okay, what I want to have in the future. I mean, it's like, um, for example, um, what can I say? For example, you want to work, for example, or how they can motivate themselves. Okay, I want to work at Tesla, let's say, or SAP or Google, Facebook, any companies. So this is my dream company day where I want to work for. And then what I have to do for that. So by doing so, they will motivate themselves every single day on, like, in order to achieve that goal, I think this is really important for them. And they, first of all, should find their dream and should work every single day to achieve that goal, I guess. Mm, yeah. Uh, thank you for, for very useful insights, Mushtari. So let's come back to our questions now. Uh, yeah, like um, you you said you all also worked in SAP. As I know, like SAP is a software company like very big so German software company. Uh, so what was your responsibility there and uh, when did you work there and how was it? Oh, um, it was great. It was one of the coolest experiences that I had as well. Um, so uh, I worked as a, I worked, um, so my measure was um, mostly focus, was focus on controlling. So what I did was like a quarterly reports, like monthly, yearly financial reports and everything. So what I'm doing now at Tesla has a kind of, you know, what I learned at SAP and what I learned at Adidas really helped me a lot with what I'm doing at Tesla now. That's why I'm always thankful that I had a chance to be a part of Tesla and also uh, to be a part of SAP and Adidas, at least for six months. Um, at SAP, um, it was my second internship. Uh, with SAP, with focus on controlling, and where I also had a chance to write my bachelor thesis. Uh, I mean, like, shortly, if I would say, it was really nice and great experience. I learned a lot. I improved myself and got a lot of really nice insights about controlling. Okay, so what was uh, your bachelor thesis specifically about? Is it... Uh, completely uh, about controlling or is there also some other topics that you uh, elaborated oh. that so the topic was mostly like BI tools. So the the name of the topic was the role of the business intelligence in the age of big data and cloud computing. So it was like to understand how these BI tools are really important for the big companies and for the small companies. Let's say Mm, you are working in finance and you deal with like hundreds of tons of reports every single day. You have to prepare these quarterly reports. You have to deal with monthly, weekly reports. And in this case, if you do this everything manually in Excel, I mean, it would take you ages. But if you have like any like practical or hands-on experience with this BI tools, let's say SQL, Excel, fin Excel Advanced, Python, Tableau, if you know any of this, or if you know, if you have the basic uh, experience or knowledge about these BI tools, especially these tools would help you a lot to deal with this, I mean, tons of reports. So my goal was to understand how these BI tools uh, could help to, business, uh, to small businesses and to big uh, businesses as well. I mean, also in the future. Yeah, very interesting. Because like uh, also the company which I work for, we also we also uh, actively use a business intelligence in our daily in daily business uh, to uh, of course to expand our business and to to become uh, uh, like stabilized in 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 today's industry. Can you also uh, briefly describe your job at Tesla? Is it also something to do with business intelligence, or is it something uh, totally different? 
I mean, I would say it's a mixture of a bit of finance and a bit of IT. Yeah. So it's not completely focused on controlling or finance. So at Tesla, I brought like all of my experiences that I had in the past. So, I mean, if I would say in shortly, yeah, a bit of finance. Yeah. IT. Okay, thank you. You know, you have been working in very top companies since your start, since your career start. Mm -hmm. And many young Uzbek people out there want to become as successful as you. So let me ask you some questions uh, that they might be asking. Uh, like, what do you think uh, are some attributes or some skills uh, which are must have in order to get job in top companies? Some general qualities you might think of. Uh, I mean, I would say you always have to be a curious person and eager to learn. Why? Because if you are, I mean, when you are the person who tries to improve himself or herself every single day, then you will live with this, like, um, then you will have a lot of chances to get hired and then you will be improving yourself every single day. For example, if you focus on finance and if you say, okay, now I graduated with this finance degree and that's enough for me. No, this is not, I mean, you are limiting yourself with the possibilities that you might have in the future. So you have to be really eager to learn every single day, every single day. So the excuse, I don't know, or I don't know how to do it, should not be like excuse for you from uh, like uh, like stopping yourself from what you want to learn. For example, let's say um, when I was at university, um, I was really interested in IT topics, especially HTML and CSS. I mean, I never used those tools, I never, but because of my interest, I was enrolled to some of the free courses on LinkedIn, so because of my curiosity and because of my interest. So you always have to be like a curious per, uh, person to learn and to develop yourself every single day. And another thing is like, um, as I already mentioned, like you never, you shouldn't say like, I don't know. And you, sh you should never make an excuse from developing yourself, I would say. I mean, this all that helped me uh, to be where I am currently. I mean, my curiosity maybe and my eagerness to learn and to develop myself every single day. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, actually, I was going to give next question on my list, but I got some very interesting question from Abdulaziz Podirov, uh, which I'll put on the screen. Hello, can you please share your experience about interview processes, questions in a German company, Adidas SAP, and American company, Tesla? How good should uh, be your German at Tesla? Thank you a lot. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your question. Um, so uh, the interview process, I mean, if you are applying, let's say for the internship or for the working student position, um, I mean, the interview process, like, is not going to be that difficult. I mean, uh, it might last like uh, two, maximum three rounds of interviews. Like the first one will be, will be with HR. Uh, which is which will last for maybe like for 30 minutes and the next two interviews maybe with your manager and with your colleagues maybe uh, I mean if you are applying for the internship or for the working student I mean but if you are applying for the full-time job then it's gonna be difficult much more difficult because you're gonna have like really a lot of like interview rounds I mean not only one two for example with Tesla I had um, five rounds of interview so you might will have the same as well but it's really depends I mean during the interview for example you, if you are applying for the internship what they're going to ask you I mean they will ask you for example tell me about yourself because as you know the interviewers don't have that much time to learn you as a person they have only your CV and motivation letter from where they can get like a briefly like imagination of what kind of person you are and what kind of experiences you had in the past. So in this um, 30 or 25 minutes, let's say in an hour, you should like um, show yourself what kind of person you are and with, by answering to some of the questions that will be asked by your manager. And when it comes to Tesla, you, do, uh, you shouldn't have, I mean, it's not required to have German skills. 
at all because as as it's an American company, so all of the uh, uh, business communications and everything uh, is held in, in in English only, not in German. Even though it's located in Germany, in Berlin, you don't need to speak German, but it's all but it's always like big plus if you do speak German as well. So your applications and your um, like documents um, with which you are applying for also should shouldn't be in German. It can be in English for I mean, Tesla. I mean, no, no. If you know in Germany, whenever you apply, uh, they say you have the like uh, you have the choice to apply your. Uh, to send your application either in English or in German. So it's completely up to you in what kind of language you you would like to send your CV, your motivation letter. I mean, it's totally up to you. I mean, if it's, for example, if it's a um, uh, German-speaking company um, where you're really German skills really required, then you definitely need this German skills. I mean, they would also ask you certain level, level of German, German skills. And if I'm not mistaken, if you would like to work for a German companies where German skills is, is required, you should have C1 level. But if it's an English company where you don't have to speak German, but it's a plus, they won't ask you and it won't be under the, under the requirements. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, my next question uh, would be quite similar to it. Uh, so l let's say a nice made CV um, G very well GPA, motivation letter, and interview. Can you rank them from most important to less important for, for application process? Um, I would say the first thing that will show you as a good candidate is your CV. So your CV should be really top. I mean, uh, you should really pay attention to your CV, um, how you like um like show your cv or how you put your experience in your cv so you should really really pay attention because before uh, inviting you for an interview they will pay attention to your cv and they will invite you depending on your cv so the first thing that's really important is your cv and then the second thing i would say your uh the interview process i mean all of the interview processes would be really beneficial and that's really important for you and then, of course, your practical experience. And then I would say your grades, your GPA, I would say. And as I already told you, if you would come with only A grades, but no experience, but other candidate would come with um, C and B grades, but with quite nice experience, trust me, they would hire the second candidate who has really nice experience rather than that guy who has A grades only, but no experience. Okay, all right. So, um, you know, uh, many people, I mean, young graduates, they have this dilemma. Uh, should I work for startups where I can learn so many things because you can be responsible for uh, multiple things at a time? Or should I work for top companies uh, right from the beginning and build my career in big giants you know what's what's your uh, advice to them um, so i had this experience with startup companies as well i mean i have nothing i have nothing to startup companies but talking about like uh from my past experience that i had with startup companies i would say never ever go to startup companies never ever i mean it's good that you will have uh, that you might have a practical experience but the thing is as these companies, they are startup, they are still growing. They have really limited budget. And because of that, they will uh, try to hire the best of the best. I mean, if you are applying for the, I mean, regardless of whether you're applying for a full-time job, for the startup, uh, for a working student or for an internship, they always try to hire the best of the best. So this is what I had. I mean, before having, like before, uh, having an internship with Adidas, I mean, a couple of months before we go, I guess, I had an interview with startup company. And if you believe, we had six rounds of interview. And after the six rounds of interview, they invited me to the seventh round of interview. I said, okay, that's fine. And you know, while um, we were on call, I mean, the lady asked me, okay, how was your 
I mean, experience with that with our interview. Could you please give me any feedback? And while I was giving my feedback, this line, uh, this young lady told me, and you know, we hired another guy, and he accepted our job. And I said, why the hell are you calling me then? And then inviting me to the seventh interview, and you you taking my time? You know, this is really, really. I mean, it's it's not that nice from the side of the business i mean from their side i would say and after that i said okay never ever never ever in my life i'm gonna apply to startup companies i mean it can be difficult to apply and to get the job with top companies but i would rather spend my time my energy and everything to applying to apply for the big companies to top companies of the world and it's really nice rather than uh, the startup companies this the same experience i had this year before having an offer from tesla i said okay let's give a second chance to the startup companies and let's see how it's gonna be and then when i applied to startup company i mean okay they invited me to an interview the interview process was good nothing to complain and then the recruiter told me okay we're gonna reach you on Friday, we will reach you out with our final decision on Friday. I said, okay, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, nothing, you know, completely nothing. I reached out to this guy and asking, do you have any update regarding the interview process? And then this guy told me, oh, we had a uh, decision on last Friday. I forgot to call you. What? You had an interview with me and you just mm-hmm. forgot to like let me know your decision? This is, I mean, this is just an excuse. And after that, said, after that, I said, okay, no, never in my life again, I'm going to apply to startup company. So this is my advice to all of the young people out there. Never fear uh, for all about the top companies. Yeah, I mean, they are top companies and you might think that they are a lot of applicants. That's true, but it's better to apply to the top companies to get an insight when you will uh, be given the chance uh, to the interview. I mean, you will see the inside of the company. At least you will have this practical, uh, the experience of the interview process. I mean, you won't lose nothing. But if you apply to the startup companies and if they won't hire you after seven rounds of interview, I mean, it's completely mess, I would say. So never go to startup companies, only to the big companies, only to the top, top, top companies. I mean, in Uzbek, we have, I mean, the same and this is, was my like um, saying during my experience during my last five six years up to now. I always said, okay, go to uh, top companies. You won't lose nothing. At least you will have a chance to see the how the interview process is going in the company. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your insights. Uh, Let's talk about your uh, your uh, life uh, abroad. Like our UD community is uh, from all around the world, and uh, they also come from different walks of life. We know, like living as an immigrant is has its goods and has its bad moments. Uh, we would love to tap into your story and uh, find out how your experience has been. Yeah, you a uh, little bit shared about at the beginning. But um, can you also talk, tell me about um, the, the country you lived in, like Germany? How, how is Uzbek community there? Like, do you have many Uzbek friends? Do you have, uh, yeah, like um, close people to you? Of course, yeah, because like uh, we have a lot of like students from Uzbekistan who are studying in Berlin, especially, and we have our Uzbek community in Berlin as well. And before this pandemic situation, we like we used to uh, together together during the uh, holidays and to cook some plov or do something else. And uh, I mean, hanging out all together. And also the same thing we have with um, girls from Uzbekistan. I mean, only the girls community we have. And then with them, we spend like really nice time during our weekend or during our holidays. And a like, couple of weeks ago, we had a really nice picnic with them. So I would say, yeah, I mean, it's really nice to know and to have those Uzbek students from Uzbekistan in Germany. Because when you miss your parents, when you miss your friends from Uzbekistan, and then, I mean, they are 
this this uh, friends of yours who are studying or who are living in Germany, they are always here for you, next to you, to support you, to motivate you, to spend time with you. So I'm really happy uh, to have to have um, those friends in my life. Yeah. Yeah. A very interesting like uh, yeah it's uh, i also think like it's very important to find compatriots in foreign country which uh, uh, who hold uh, same values same uh, you know experience same background um, yeah like what do you think uh, what kind of um, cultural values uh, like uzbek cultural values do you still hold on even though you are in germany Oh, <laughs> I mean, the, I mean, I mean, for me, as I'm a girl, uh, for me, it's always like, okay, never forget that you, you came from Uzbekistan, that your parents believed you and you have to be that, that, um, uh, that person that they want to see or that, that they want to have. So you should never let them down. And whatever you do, whatever you say, you always have to sing twice before you do anything. I mean, this is what I always try to do. And other than that, I mean, what other value values is like always being together with Uzbek community. I think this is also one of the values that you never forget where you came from and that you know that some of the Uzbek students also here and sometimes you can share with your experience from your past with the students who are coming to Germany, for example, who came to Germany this year or last year. I mean, this is really nice. And this, this experience is really nice. Okay, so is there also any challenge you faced as an immigrant in Germany? Some difficulties? I mean, in the beginning it was mostly language-wise because like I didn't speak any German at all, only English. And as you know, like not always they are open uh, if you want to speak or if you would like to communicate in English. So, I mean, I had to force myself, I mean, not to force, I mean, as long as you are living in Germany, you have to speak the, the language of this country as well. So for me, the big difficulty was this language. And then, as I told you, this cultural shock to get used to this uh, university life, to the lectures, to the final exams. And also, what more? I mean, another thing is that you miss your parents. I mean, this is also something that you always think. And then sometimes when you face those difficulties, you would like to just give up everything and then to go back to your parents. But at some point you think that you look back and then you realize like how much, um, what you have done in the past. And now you have to like, uh, I mean, do a bit more uh, to be a better person of yourself in the future, in the future, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, our audience are very much interested in your work experiences and they are, um, one of them uh, is also asking, uh, what are the challenges during previous or current work experience or how did you solve them? Can you give some examples? Yeah, I mean, if you can remember, of course. Um, so the challenges, I mean, you always have this challenge in the beginning because when you start your work, um, you are, you are having the new team and you are having these new responsibilities, new tasks. I mean, I had this feeling also when I started my work with Tesla, I mean, I was thinking, I mean, even now I think every single day, am I going to handle this? Am I going to meet the expectation of my manager, meet the expectation of my colleagues? I mean, you have this pressure every single day. And regardless of it's your um, internship or your work, uh, working student or your full-time job, because even though you are doing your internship or you are working as a working stu student at some of the companies, you will be doing the certain tasks. I mean, you will be really challenged and you will be really a part of the team with certain tasks, I mean, with certain responsibilities. At that time, you think, okay, if I'm going to do this mistake, it's going to impact, it's going to have some impact in the future or to other my colleagues as well. So this was some of the challenges that I had. And what also is, um, it was during the SAP, or it was during the Adida, I mean, first my experience, as I told you, I had no experience before I joined Adidas and I didn't know, I mean, how to use Excel. 
And once, and you know, like, as I told you, you have to do with the reports and you should know to use Excel. I mean, I knew that I know how to use Excel, but when I was given a chance and to use VLOOKUP formula, I said, oh my God, I don't know Excel at all. So for me, it was a bit kind of, and you know, we are, uh, in Uzbekistan, we are a bit shy to ask something. We are always shy. We try to solve everything on our own. And I had that as well. I was so shy to ask this question. My manager, I said, okay, if I'm going to ask her, maybe I would look like a stupid or I would look like a silly because this is a really simple question. But no, mm, I mean, the more you ask, the more you know. So you should never stop yourself from asking the question. If you don't know, don't say, I don't know. Do your research, but come up with some of the solutions. But always try to find the answer to your question and your manager uh, they are always there, your colleagues, your manager, they are always there and happy to help you with uh, with the questions that you have. Yeah. Okay, yes, yeah, thank you very much. It's uh, it's indeed uh, never late or it's uh, never um, shaming to ask uh, if you don't know something. It's also one of my um, um, principles of uh, life. So can you uh, also tell me um, how do you manage your work-life balance, like your work and your private life? I mean, um, because, you know, the, the reason why I'm asking is you work in one of the top companies and of course the top companies, uh, there are lots of workload you have to do, lots of like you have deadlines. That's why, uh, are you able to, to manage your work-life balance? Of course, because um, managing your time and prioritize some of the tasks, it's one of the top skills that you should have. I mean, if you don't like plan your tasks or plan your day or week ahead, then you will mess up, I would say. And the same thing, like when I start my work, I always have this plan. Okay, what am I going to do now? And then and at some point, I know how long it's going to take for me to complete some of the tasks. So you always have to prioritize your tasks, prioritize your like work. And then depending on that also, um, like have balance between your private life and your like work life. But when it comes to work, like you are familiar that in Germany, you have like eight, eight hours, like that you cannot exceed more than eight hours a day and 40 hours a week. So it's, I think it's really nice. Um, I mean, I would say like you have like enough time after your work uh, for your private life as well. So it's not that difficult. The only thing is that you have to prioritize all of your tasks and your day ahead. Yeah, since uh, since we talk about uh, work-life balance, uh, let me give you some general questions about your interests and your personal hobbies. Uh, what kind of books uh, you like to read? Um, the books I like to read is like nowadays what I'm reading or what I read in the past is The Pursuit of Happiness, The Devil Wears Prada and The Life of the Steve Jobs. I enjoyed it a lot. And also the first and second part of The Devil Wears Prada and some other like, you know, the motivational books that always motivates you. And the same thing comes to movies. When I watch movies, I always try to find the balance of when it motivates you. So what I would highly recommend is uh, to read this, um, The Pursuit of Happiness. This is the most great and must watch movie, I would say. And The Devil Wears Prada, the first and the second part. I mean, the girls, they know that we only have the first part as a movie, but not the second part. But if you read the second part, you will enjoy this as well. Because, um, I mean, I'm not going to be the spoiler, but it really worth that to read the second part as well and to watch the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness. It's For me, it's number one motivating the movie in my life that always motivates me every single time. Whenever I face any difficulties, I try to watch it because every time when I watch, I like take a lesson or I take like a different motivation from this movie. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to be the spoiler. Just watch it and then, yeah, you will have a lot of uh, motivation after watching this movie. <laughs> okay. Is there also any person or people that inspire you, motivate you as, as the books you read? Um, I would say the character of The Pursuit of Happiness. 
uh, Chris Gardner, he really, really motivated me because as you know, uh, maybe you watched this movie because uh, the, this guy, the Chris Gardner, I mean, you know, um, he has a kind of um, work experience, the life that I find in my life as well, because he came from nothing. He uh, had an internship in one of the best uh, companies in the US, and then um, he wasn't paid at all. I mean, no, no, no money. And, you know, even his wife never trusted him that he can accomplish this uh, internship and that he would get this internship after completing this. I mean, she made fun of him, I would say. But because of his hard work, because he knew what he wanted to have in the future, and he worked every single day uh, on his, like, uh, to get what he wants, and then in the end, he achieved that. And after a couple of years, he had this like um, company that was one of the successful brokerage companies in the US, I would say. I mean, uh, he's alive. And this movie was the inspiration of the inspirational movie of the life of Chris Gardner. So I definitely um, advise to watch this movie to all of the students, I would say. Um, and also one more thing. Um, there one another movie in Russian. It's it's called like Salam New York, and this is another great movie that really shows the real life of every student who has a lot of great ideas before coming to certain country, and then after coming to countries and about their difficulties, about all of their difficulties in life, about their difficulties in their um, university life. So this movie tried to um, show uh, the life of the young student who came to US to pursue his master degree and after became uh, an employer of one of the great companies in US. Okay, so we, uh, our audience should definitely look for it and watch it uh, because I, I also believe that many of our audience are uh, going to uh, study, willing to study abroad or going to work abroad. Um, so let, let me pull up some questions from audience. Uh, what do you think, Shahnozar I'm John is asking, what do you think is your greatest strength? Mm, I would say the eagerness to, eagerness to learn. I mean, every single day to learn new things. For me, the excuse, uh, for me, I don't know cannot be an excuse. I mean, if I don't know it, I can Google it. I can like watch some YouTube videos. I mean, the same thing. I can make an example for this. For example, like last year, I started my food blog on Instagram. And when I started my food blog, like I had no idea how to film. Okay, this is not that difficult. But after filming your, like uh, the process of how you cook, I had no idea how to bring all of this uh, small videos into one minute video and to make this nice video and what i did is like i could say okay i don't know and just gave up what i did is like i just googled every single thing how to put like text on your video how to put some filters how to squeeze it how to make it bigger how to make it smaller so i googled every single thing so for me i would say the greatest strength for me the eagerness to learn every I mean, everything that I'm interested in without making any excuse that I don't know, that I never had that, that I never done this before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, the next question, which is coming from audience is uh, also very important and very interesting to, to know. Are you planning to come back to Uzbekistan in future? Yeah, probably probably she means as a as a professional uh working professional you know um uh, i don't know yet i mean i don't know let's see okay so will bring us i mean uh the next couple of years i definitely know that i would like to be a part of tesla for longer period and you know you never know where your life will bring you next so let's see Mm, yeah, yeah, of course. Like you, you have started new challenge. You have started new journey in your life, and you should definitely uh, accomplish it. Like 
Um, yeah. Uh, we also have some questions, also and some praises from our audience, uh, which saying, uh, Maladets, uh, very glad our Uzbek girls taking such challenges, important to tell about Shahlo to, to many our females as possible. Yeah, like um, she's, um, yeah, she's also very impressed about your um, success abroad. And uh, on the final uh, note, um, we, yeah, let's let's uh, talk about, uh, yeah, like uh, you know, what what would you advise to young Uzbek uh, people who are probably now in Uzbekistan and uh, who uh, dream of uh, going abroad, studying abroad, working abroad? What uh, should they do and what should uh, they avoid, you know? Mm, I mean, I would say you should try to leave your comfort zone. I mean, um, I mean, if you want something in life, you shouldn't wait for the perfect moment. You have to leave your comfort zone and then take the first step. I mean, um, it's always difficult to get the first step. And it's, I mean, in the beginning, you might think that it's not possible that you're gonna, that you're not gonna accomplish it, but take the first step. If you have the dream, no matter what other people would say to you, they might say, no, you cannot do it. No, it's not for you. Um, you're gonna lose it. Never ever listen to those people. Just if you have a dream, you go over and get it. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's that's very important that uh, people uh, should pursue, no matter how uh, people outside them, uh, like people around them, think of. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like um, the 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 last comment I I would like to pull up is like very oh. long comment. Uh, mm -hmm. I think this uh, pretty much sums up uh, also my my comment on the interview. Like. Um, Nice to see you. First of all, uh, thank you for sharing your great experience with me and with our Uzbek diaspora community. And uh, she's also, I think, saying my daughter graduated from high school and uh, graduated from high school and will go to college. Unfortunately, she was unable to attend today. My question is, are you open to mentoring advice? How can we contact you, email, messenger, you can contact me through Mukaram Khan Kahramanova. Okay, she's asking if you can uh, advise her or her daughter uh, via, I mean, personal mentoring or something. Are you open for it or, I mean, you can uh, answer. Yeah, thank you so much, Mukaram Mukaram Khan, for everything you said. It's really nice to hear from you. Um, of course, I'm always open to give some advice, to share my past experience. Like, as I already mentioned, I do have my food blog on Instagram. And whenever I post something related to my studies, to my work, I always get a lot of messages, a lot of messages. And I try to do my best to answer, to respond to, to, respond to all of them. And also, I do have a Telegram channel as well, where the comment section is open. And whoever has like any questions, they are all they all they can they are free to leave them, and I'm I will definitely will answer and I will try to reach her via Facebook. I guess today, yeah, to give oh. more advice. Yeah, it's 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 very nice of you. Uh, yeah, short, and I will contact you. Maybe I mean if I cannot contact you today, latest by tomorrow, I will reach out to you, and then I will be very really happy if I could help you somehow. Yeah, as, as uh, she said, we, we should also link in our uh, YouTube videos uh, or in YouTube comment section or Facebook comment section, uh, Mushtari's Telegram channel and Instagram channel. Uh, so you can just visit there and uh, leave your comment, ask your questions and she will, uh, she will be answering it, uh, answering them. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you Mushtari for your interview, like uh, for, uh, for your like sharing your experience, it was uh, also very beneficial for me, and I hope, and I'm convinced that for our audience, and I, we Uzbek diaspora, wish you all the best uh, for your future endeavors in, in uh, for your uh, work and for your professional and private life, 
and take care, be healthy, and uh, see you next time. Yeah, thank you so much, Big Zod, and for your team, for you, for inviting me, for having me, for this great interview. I really did enjoy it. And I hope that, like, I mean, a couple of things that I share it with you will, will really help you. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to share um, some of the YouTube videos that really helped me during the interview process with Tesla that might be really helpful for the audience as well. And thank you so much. Stay safe and take care. Yeah, bye-bye.